Welcome to this week's edition of You Opt to Know, the Daily Orange's opinion podcast. I'm Michael Sessa, and this week I'm joined by our liberal columnist, Brittany Zalata, and our conservative columnist, Michael Frenari. My pleasure. Cool. My pleasure, Dave. So tonight we're going to talk about the recently passed Reproductive Health Act. So the act passed the state legislature on the anniversary of the historic Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade, and the act does three main things. So it makes abortions legal at any time when necessary to protect a woman's health or safety. Uh, It allows medical professionals who aren't doctors to perform abortions, and it repeals criminal penalties for harming unborn uh, children. All right. So, Brittany, you wrote a column supporting the act. So why do you support the changes? Um, Well, the RHA basically um, is a reproductive health accessibility law, which uh, provides access to legal and safe abortion for women who need it, and uh, as well, it ties in with uh, more access to contraception, and it decriminalizes abortion under the New York State Penal Act. So opponents of the RHA have also been pretty outspoken, and they've cited a few concerns with the ethicality of later term abortions, and also having uh, medical professionals who aren't doctors perform abortions. So you think those concerns are valid, Michael? Yeah, I do. Um, One of the things you mentioned earlier was that it removes abortion from the penal code entirely, in New York State at least. And I think that's kind of, that's the big thing that that kind of bothers me about it, is that there's something very kind of um, almost sterile about the whole thing. And it's like as if as if abortion is, you know, like a mammogram or like some kind of health checkup. Like it's a, it's just a health procedure, as opposed to something that's a little more kind of deep than that, a little more important, and something that's, you know, it's 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 part of the the way that we determine which human life kind of matters and doesn't. So it's as opposed to it being something of kind of like real serious cosmic importance. Really, it almost turns abortion into like you know, like a health checkup, and that that's the thing that I think I kind of object to with the RHA. Do you think any of the concerns from opponents are valid, or there's uh, room for any compromise? I see where uh, the opponents like stand with uh, in regards to uh, abortion being uh, practiced by non-medical licensed physicians. Is uh, it moves towards midwives and uh, nurses and physician assistants, and I feel like those are valid. But at the same time, uh, in researching and interviewing. Don Gresham, who is the health policy analyst for Senator Liz Krueger, who was the main senator to pass this bill, um, the New York scope of practice for nurses and uh, the medical assistants, in essence, uh, their scope of practice is actually uh, binds them qualified to perform abortion. And uh, I don't really agree with your stance on uh, abortion being seen as, it shouldn't be seen as a medical access or medical procedure. Um, I think it's very well, it should be very well seen as a medical procedure because uh, basically women's pregnancies are very sensitive. Uh, It could be normal and it could be happy-go-lucky and she's going to have the baby, but then environmental factors and uh, whatever they may be, which, you know, they can multiply up with a pregnancy, it could make a pregnancy very high risk and it could make the fetus unviable and possibly put the woman's life at risk, which um, given the statistics in America, uh, they're not looking so great with uh, maternity mortality rates and morbidity rates. So we're the only developed country that has those high rates. So uh, that's comparable to third world countries. So that's oh. a little bit shocking. We're also one of the only developed countries that allows late term abortion. So that, 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 that sword cuts both ways. Do you think there's, uh, like since it's such a polarized topic politically, that there's aspects of the debate that both political ends might be able to compromise on, or do you think uh, it's just an issue that's harder to overcome? I wish I could tell you yes, like I really do, but um, I mean the way we've, we've kind of um, hashed this one out politically is that like we're going to kind of, it seems like at least, it's, it's going to be solved through the Supreme Court. Like there's, anytime legislation gets brought up, and you saw this with the bill 
Ben Sass tried to bring to the floor a few days ago. Any time that you try to really make a legislative solution for this, it doesn't really seem to work. It seems like it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be decided through the Supreme Court, and that's not exactly you know a middle ground kind of solution. Uh, well, uh, I did do my research about the Louisiana bill, and uh, in essence, it's being halted right now. And I feel like with similar bills that are passed, like the one that was trying to be passed a few days ago with Texas, um, it kind of limits uh, the accessibility of health care, pl- uh, Healthcare, um, sorry, I'm like healthcare uh, uh, clinics, yeah, uh, for those who need it. And I feel like uh, what people overlook is the racial disparities of uh, minority women in American healthcare. Interesting points on both sides. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or you want to contribute to the discussion, you could send us a letter to the editor at opinion at dailyorange.com. And as always, check the podcast and the video. We'll see you next week. <laughs>